Hello guys, uh, this is part two of the Battle of uh, Ushova or Fraustadt from the Kalish uh, 1706 game. We have reached turn two and um, well, not all the Swedes are yet in contact. We have seen some battle over here on the Saxon right hand flank where they did kind of counterattack the Swedish advance. So we have seen a lot of cavalry battle and so far we have one Swedish unit in the dead pile and we also have one Swedish unit here in the this um, dispersed track but this guy will come back now in the Swedish turn two so let's continue the game from here so let's see now um, so we start with the movement phase and before we do that we're gonna put back this guy adjacent to a leader let's see this is Scania, they were, um, where did they come from? Where's the Scania regiment? Or was there only one of those? Perhaps there was, I don't remember where it did get eliminated, but probably here. So I'm gonna put it, put him adjacent to Hummer Yelm here. Okay. Now let's see, so the, the um, Saxons uh, are busy building up their cavalry right hand flank here, they are getting the dragoons from the rear lines up to the front lines. Uh, maybe actually it's good to have a few back here because if the line breaks you can have something to counterattack with. But let's see, we want to charge with the Swedes I'm sure right now and we all of these will be in charge range and we will see a lot of uh, counter charge by the by the Saxons um, but let's start from here we have some hmm, should we charge some infantry as well maybe we should we have good range we will get some defensive fire upon us but let's do that anyway so Rehenschuld here he gonna charge in here one two three uh, I will not bother to counter charge with boys to um, cuirassiers yet because they will take on the next unit here. So when they reach this hex, these guys will counter charge. There's no firing because we have proper cavalry here, no dragoons. So we're going to go right into the uh, combat phase. And both have two strength, both have nine in morale. This is uh, uh, he's fighting the. Oh, the Northern Scania regiment uh, and the morale track is on zero right now so no modifiers there, no terrain, so it's a straight one-to-one -one odds here and we rolled an eight on the one-to-one -one track meaning actually the attacker takes one loss oh so the boys uh, took a hit um, then we have the next one, these guys, one, two, we have a counter charge here as well. Here I think we have dragoons, yes, so they will fire first, with two strength. Uh, that's certainly a miss, so then we have the attack coming in. We have two against two again, but since we have lesser of a greater of our morale, we will actually attack with one against two in odds. That sucked. It would be great if we could have got the pistol or carb carbine. I don't know how it's pronounced in English. Carbine? Carbine? I don't know. But you know these uh, shorter musket things that the uh, dragoons often had. So they will uh, uh, fire here. Uh, it would be great if they could have hit, you know, to even out the odds a bit. But now we need to attack once too. The good thing is though for these guys, since we have a leader with us, they cannot get dispersed. Let's see, one to two, it doesn't sound good as, as an odds, but uh, we rolled pretty good though, so maybe we get the good result anyway. Four on the one to two. Uh, okay, that's no effect actually. So nothing there. So these are locked in combat basically. We're gonna see some combat coming up soon. Uh, next one, we have one more from the same regiment. We're gonna move up those. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna do the same thing here and hope hoping I will get a a hit with a with a 
fire combat here. And this time we might have done it. So two strength, cavalria. We rolled a 10, that's one hit. That's what I was looking for. So we got a hit here on the fire and then we charge home. So now we have two to one, but the lesser morale. So it's a one to one attack. Rolled pretty good. Five on a one to one. That's B1. So actually these guys need to retreat one and we take ground. We would need to do a morale check here, but since they are morale nine, I'm sure they won't, don't bother. No. So we're pushing them back a bit here. Now, I think here we have the live regiment. This is the live dragoons. I think we might do some, yeah. I think we have Pomorsky here. We could use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, we can use this guy in this attack as well. So I'm going to bypass uh, these guys with these goos, these troops and just attack Fleming. So we go here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I don't reach them, but I think I will counter charge anyway with these guys. So first Saxons fire, an eight is a miss. The Swedish fire back because we have dragoons, miss, and then we have the charge. And now we have same odds and same morale and everything. So it's just a one to one. And we're on the five. I think that was the defend retreat one. Yes. So we are pushing back these dragoons a bit. These are 80 morale and they got an B1 result. So they also ignore the morale check. Okay. And then we have Krasau himself. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, I wonder if I want to count the charge here because now we will have but otherwise they will attack these guys instead with two units and that's not that's bad so I need to count the charge to loosen up the pressure on this guy a bit so we're gonna fire with the Fleming that's a eight which was a miss I believe yep these are dragoons, so they're gonna fire back. It's live, live dragoons actually. They missed as well, and then they had the attack. But this will be a, a bit of a lesser good odds. Two against two, but then we have the leader with a one here who will modify um, the battle in, in Swedish favor. So we're gonna attack at one to two. We roll the five. That was okay. Both sides take one hit. Boom and boom. And we also need to check if the leader is uh, uh, harmed in a way. So a double six will kill the leader. No. Okay, that's that. <clears throat> then. Um, I think I'll lead the light cavalry a bit. I will use them later on to uh, we could use them in some more attacks here. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Maybe we can get behind the these lines. That's nice. I'm gonna do that actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, five. Four. Let's see now. Five, six. Now I will attack these guys from the rear as well, because they are in my front hexes. So these guys will only defend with one uh, strength point. Uh, the Pomorsky over here, they will go. Hold on, I will. Should I help? I think I need to help here, but I can go use the light cavalry for that. So I'm going to use the Pomorsky to help against these guys. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna place them here to be ready to attack if these guys, if they want to, you know, take this one on the in the flank, I have something to protect him. So we're gonna see a lot of cavalry battle coming up. Um, then we have the infantry charge coming in here. Um, how much is that in movement points? I think that was this one, so it will be two movement points for infantry. Okay. Now the thing is, when we now we start approaching the, the artillery here, so you're gonna see some fire against us, but we need to do it anyway, right? Uh, so these guys go one, two, and four. We could fire here. Um, but we will get minus one because we are firing against um, a built-up area. So I'm gonna spare my artillery ammunition because there are more Swedes coming, I'm sure of that. One, two, three. One, two. Oh, sorry, one. Here I can fire for the first time on a three range. So let's see now. Light artillery with a strength point of two and a range of three. So we're gonna fire on this table. This is actually wrongly printed. This is the correct one. One, two, three. They should say one, two, three over here as well. It seems to have done some, yeah, some mistake here. Maybe the, maybe this is Excel from the beginning and it just auto <laughs> incremented or something. I don't know, but this should be one, two, three. So actually the range is, we, should, we need to roll on the four row here. Uh, so let's see what we get. No modifiers. That's a five. Uh, so that's certainly a miss, yes. So this guy has now fired on the three hex range. But we're gonna continue moving forward this, with these guys. Uh, so that's a new fire on the two hex range. Now we got the seven. Uh, here we are. Um, Two hex range and the seven, still a miss. And then we attack here as well. I'm gonna fire the last time, so now I have used this artillery. But now we get really close fire with the artillery. And this is certainly a hit. So now we are on a one range and we rolled an 11. So this is actually an R result, meaning I'm taking one strength point loss and also they are. Uh, dispersed. So we flip this and put it in a dispersed box. Okay, that was a tough result. But we have more Swedes coming up, you know. Uh, these are there from the same regiment, led by Maldefelt. So he's coming now. One, two, three, and four. And this artillery cannot fire anymore. Okay, then we have this regiment. One, two. Here I could fire once. I think I'd do that. So here comes the first artillery fire. This is also light artillery. And a three hex range. That's a uh, six. That's a miss. Three, three. We now will fire on the two range. That's a five. That's a miss as well. And then we go in here, but I will not fire anymore because now I'm gonna fire against the guy that will attack the artillery battery itself. So here, here comes another one. One, two, three. So here I will fire on the, on the one range. And that's a four, really bad roll by the artillery there. So four is a miss. Everything one to, uh, zero to six is a miss. So these guys can attack uh, next turn. Let's see, here we have the heavy artillery. So these guys will fire here on the three range. Actually, these guys have now also fired on the one range. Heavy artillery on the three range. And we roll the six. Let's see now. Heavy artillery, two strength points. Um, this, it's a range of three. We roll a six, that's a miss. 
so these have now fire on the three range. We go here, we fire again on the two range. I think this one I hurt sooner or later, so that's a six on this range. Still a miss though. We need an eight to hit. No, actually this was on two range, but uh, we rolled on eight. Uh, yes, two range. Okay, that's minus one. So these Westman guys from Westmanland um, regiment took a hit, uh, but I will push on. Now's the question: Do I want to? Uh, fire once more or not? Hmm. On the one range, or should I wait till? I'm not sure anybody can reach me actually, so I'm gonna fire on the one range as well. Maybe we can eliminate that guy. That's an eight, sure. On the one, um, that would be also a dispersed result, but we eliminated these guys, and we push this back one more. Okay, so these artillery were really firing heavy here. We're gonna remember we haven't yet fired on the four range, we can actually do that as well. So these guys cannot reach any units, but we're gonna move anyway. One, two, three. Four. One, two, three, four. I think these are uh, it's not in the artillery range actually. One, two, here we are on the four range, so I can, then I'm gonna fire. That's a five, I think that's a miss on the four range, yep. So this has now, this artillery unit is done now. So I did, how many movement points did I spend? Uh, where was this guy? I think he made two, so that would be three and four. Then we have this guy, the pikes. One, two, three, four. Led by Sparre over there. Okay, so next turn they will go in, but they will face more artillery fire before they can they can uh, reach the uh, enemy lines there. Okay, then we have some cavalry over here. I don't want to. Hmm, Nieland's cavalry. I think I will not. I will be a bit cautious with these guys because we have not the strength to engage the um, Saxon guards yet, really, because we have only one or two units of infantry here and these are cavalry, so I'm gonna be a little cautious. So I'm gonna just um, put myself just outside of the artillery range, like so. This guy stays, so I'm gonna just wait for the right time to attack. Maybe when these start to crumble and start attacking from the flank, we can also attack from the front. Okay, then we have the cavalry flank. Let's see now. Um, these guys will have a hard time to move because they are in zone of control, so they need to pretty much stay there and battle, I think. But we can get some more troops into. I think. I mean, these guys are in a, a bit of a trouble. I be, believe now. Um, but can we get around the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? We can actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And these guys cannot count the charge because they did a sweeping thing over there. Um, then we have, well, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, the thing is, if I move these guys forward, these can count charge, or can they, since they have a, a unit there having them in a zone of control. I'm not sure they can if they... I think I need to check that in the rules real quick. Hold on. Okay, it says that uh, units in enemy zone of control cannot counter charge. So these guys cannot charge. 
So we can safely go up here. Um, here we have already troops. So I'm going to just let's see one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to bring in more troops there. And these guys, I will just have a kind of a reserve. One, two. I think that was all the movement then. So, no, I haven't moved that regiment. It's a Narke Värmland regiment. I need, I think I'm going to push them through this gap here towards the, uh, giving these guys some support in the coming attack. So I'm just going to move them forward. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Like that. So we have a regiment coming through a big gap here. Uh, no artillery can fire. Okay, so we're done with the movement phase. Kind of remove these, and then we have some combat to do. Let's start from this flank. So let's see now. Here we have the first attack to do. We have three units that will attack them, and first we're going to do some firing. So we have four points of cavalry firing at the Fleming Regiment's unit. That's a seven with four points cavalry. That's minus one. So we got the hit on these guys. Boom. And now they will fire back. They have two in strength. Rolled really bad. Then we have the combat. So now we're gonna have six points against one. That's six to one. And we have the same morale as for the best units. So it's, um, that's it, six to one. I think that's pretty good odds, right? And we roll the seven on the six to one chart or column and we get the B2 minus one. So these guys take first a hit and then they also need to retreat, which they cannot do. So these are eliminated. So we're gonna move up the morale track up towards the Swedish side again. One guy could also enter the hex these guys will do but they can't battle again so next battle is here we have one point on each side so we start with the swedish firing one point cavalry oh we rolled a 10 that's interesting one point and a 10 we actually eliminated those guys with just a fire so um but they will first get the chance to fire back as well they rolled an eight they also have one strength, that's nothing. But these guys got eliminated by the fire. We got, we got this up to the one again. But remember one thing, um, I think I've talked about that in a previous uh, playthrough of this game. Uh, on the turn when this track is changed, you never use the new value. You still use the old value that you have when the turn started. So from the next turn on, we will have the plus one for the morale. Okay, so these guys could actually advance and but we won't do that this time because we want to keep this sock here. Okay, let's see now. We have these two will attack here, this will attack here, and these two will attack here. So we have two units attacking. First we have a fire, two points. Miss. The Saxons fire back with two points. Also a miss. Then we have the attack proper. We have three points against two. Three to two. Uh, so it's uh, actually um, getting down to one, one then. But we have a morale edge for the Swedes because we have the Northern Scania with us. So we have actually two to one in the odds. And remember again, we cannot use that one night right now. That's a nine on the two to one. That's Pretty bad roll, I think. Both sides take a hit. Okay, so these guys, the Dinewald Cavalry or Dragoons take a hit. And then we take also a hit for the Bremish uh, Dragoons here. Then we have this charge against Dinewald himself with his uh, Cavalry Regiment. Um, or actually Dragoons, so they will fire first. And they rolled an 8 on a strength of two, that's a miss. So we have the battle proper, we have two to two, but we have Swedish better morale, so we have, um, instead for one, one, one against one, we have two against one, 
in odds. This guy don't give any combat odds because he's a zero point leader here. Okay. That's a good roll from the Swedes. F two to one and a four. One hit and two retreats. So let's see now. One hit and then they need to retreat two. We're gonna check the leader. Oh, that was close. A double six would have killed him. He don't need to check the morale really because he has the leader with him. But these guys will pursue. So we have a breakthrough through the lines now. But this is what I talked about. It's always good to have some guys in the second line who could engage enemy troops coming through the line. But they have this threat as well, this light cavalry on the flank here who could... If, I mean, if these guys will attack here, we could get a counter from the Swedish lights in the rear. That would be really bad. Okay, we have one more cavalry against cavalry fight to do here, so no firing, but we have 2 to 1 in odds because of the strength points, we're all is the same. But this time we rolled bad, an 11 on 2 to 1. Uh, A1, so actually the this cavalry bounces and we pursue. But um, we don't need to check the morale because they are 9 in morale and just retreated 1 hex. They are good. So we have some dynamic cavalry fighting happening here. That's cool, I'm, I think. I mean, the, it's not just a big line. It's here and there they break through and some backs off and, you know, do some reorganizations and all that. We have one more cavalry unit here, the Pomorsky Dragoons, the Pomerian Dragoons. No, sorry, not those guys. Oh, they should have been in this, this battle, by the way. Oh, I forgot about that. Well, too late now. Uh, these just had some their eyes on maybe the Russian infantry here and didn't bother to join the charge there. But we have one more battle to do, but I now realized one thing. Since these guys have these two in their front, they need to attack both. Oh, I missed that little thing. Okay. So, this could be really tough for the Swedes right now, to be honest. I shouldn't have done that if I remember that, but done is done. So let's see now. We'll start with having some musketry fire coming in from the from the Russian infantry there, Belling and Kadeus uh, regiments. Uh, so they will fire on the four strength table. And... Oh, a 6 is enough to roll a hit. We won't get the uh, R result, though, because we have a leader with us. If he survives, that is. Let's see now. That's a 9. A 9 would be an R result, but we ignore that. If the leader is survived, but we still take a hit. So these guys take a hit. And then we roll for Rienschel, who is actually the army commander. So it would be catastrophic if he had died now, but he didn't. So that's good. Okay, but now we need to attack. And now we have some problems with the Swedes. Well, first of all, we are attacking one against four. But we have some good things here for the Swedes, first of all. Uh, when cavalry attacks infantry, the strength points are doubled. So this is actually worth two points in the attack. So we have two to four. So it's one to two in the odds. Then we have Rienschel, who, sh who will um, give one odds as well in Swedish favor. So that's one to one. But we have some infantry in built-up area, and that's actually a uh, one modifier. So we're still back to the one to two um, table, I believe. Let's see now if we count it again. This is counted double, so it's two points against four. That's one to two. This is 1 to 1 for Rienschuld, then back to 1 to 2 because we have the built up areas where the cavalry is attacking. So 1 to 2. A 6 on the 1 to 2 means. Ah, oh, crap. The attacker takes a hit. Okay. That was bad. So these guys go down. And this goes back, 
now we're gonna check for Rehenschild again. If he is a casualty, no. So he can now relocate to uh, the closest unit, more, more or less. So that would be the Pomorski Dragoons over here. Well, that was... Uh, ah, I forgot about the thing that you need to attack all the units in your sock if, we, if no other guy is attacking there. And we have not the Söderman Land Regiment yet in place to attack these Russian infantry, so... Okay, that's how it went. Next up, we have... Let's see now, these needs to attack here, these here, and these here, pretty much. So let's start from here. We have some pikemen, they have three in strength points, so no fire from the Swedes, but the... Um, Russian infantry will fire. Two points. That's a uh, seven. That's a miss. Um, so let's see now. We have Mardefeld with us. Uh, this is... Artillery I think is worth one point in close combat. So this would be three points against three points. So it's one to one. Mard we have no morale. Both have morale eight. By the way, hold on. I should have gotten a morale boost from these guys. I forgot about that. So it would have been a one-to-one -one attack here, actually, and not one-to-two. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to retrace my steps a bit here. So we rolled, we rolled a six. It should have been... A no effect actually because it should would have been a one-to-one -one I'm gonna actually redo that because that's an important thing um, so this guys is actually not killed it was a no effect so Rangel would be here again sorry again about that I forgot about the morale of the units there okay let's recount this one then so we have three points against three points that's one to one the morale is the same so nothing there. Mardefeld will though boost the Swedish attack to a 2 to 1. But we have these... Uh, I think it's this thing that's the... Uh, kind of, you know, Cheval de Fris. And that's minus 1. So actually it's back to 1 to 1 here. Oops, I'm gonna re-roll that. That's a six on the one to one. No effect, nothing here. But I think next time the Swedes will get more troops helping out in the attack. The thing is though, all these artillery may fire once more before the Swedes can get the chance to do that. Okay, we have another attack here. So that's two points against two, but we're gonna see some fire first. The Swedish will do the offensive fire first with two points. That's an 11. Oh, uh, okay. Heat and dispersed. Good musketry there by the Swedes. So we take a hit and these guys will be dispersed, but we're going to fire back first. Six on two. That's a miss. So here we have a breakthrough. This is actually eliminated now. And this is a, a dispersed. We're gonna put them there. These guys will now break through here. Um, did I have gold there as well? Let me see now. Could have had that guy in that hex. Where did he start? Twenty-three thirteen. No, he's. He's actually there. Strange. I think I moved everybody up to some units. Maybe he should be there. 23. Let's put him there. Okay, so here we have a breakthrough. Um, that's all there, I think. So then we have this attack. Um, 
Again, we start with a fire. Two points from the Swedes. Again, an amazing roll. Uh, that's an R result again. But now we have the leader, so these will not be dispersed, but they will take a hit. I could actually opt to take the hit on the artillery when thinking of it. And I think artillery will be less important from now on, so I'm going to actually do that. I'm going to bring that down to a 1. Then the Russians fire back. An 8. That's also a hit. Bam. And then we have the attack. So, two, three points. One point against three points. Uh, that's not good for the Swedes, so it's one against three. And then we have this one, so it's one against four. And we rolled an 11. I'm sure that's not good. Actually, it's a no effect. That was lucky for the Swedes. No effect there. So these guys are standing their ground. I'm not so sure that Gultz were here. He might have been here actually, but I don't bother. I'm gonna, I mean, he started up here so he could have moved there pretty much. Okay, that's the infantry battle. So here we have a pushback, a lot of firing back and forth, but uh, both guys hitting, hitting on each other, but um, yeah. Here we have a breakthrough, and here we have a no effect as well, I believe, so nothing much happening. No battles over here. Here we have a big cavalry thing happening, so we're gonna fire first. That's two points for the Swedes. And seven. Miss. Then we have two points also for the Saxons. They rolled also a 7, so that will be a miss. Then we attack. So we have 1, 2, 4 points against 2. That's 2 to 1. We have the same odds. No, we actually have these uh, Slachta units who comes with 9 in morale. So we get uh, 3 to 1, and then also 4 to 1 because of Humerian. So 4 to 1 in the attack for the Swedes. And we rolled a 10. 10 would be attacker takes a hit, defender must retreat. One hex. So attacker would take a hit, that would be. Mm, that's tough. Let's take this guy then. It's a bit bad to take this away because that means the morale will go down. Then. These needs to retreat one, that's fine, they can do that. And these guys will follow. Okay, a seven, no, it's an eight moral unit retreating one, that's no problem, no. Okay, next attack, here. Here we have a rear charge, so these will only defend with one point. So we have four against one. And then we have also a morale edge, so it's five against one in odds. And now we're all really good. Oh, five to one. That would be Noel. That's actually a hit on attacker. Defender takes a hit and is dispersed. Uh, this is okay. They need first to retreat for hexes. So we need to see if he can do that. He actually can through this gap. He was lucky there. He can go one, two, three, four. So he will go this, he take a hit, go the four hexes, and then he's dispersed. But the attacker needs to take a hit as well. I'm going to take that from the Pomorski. Okay. Then we could also pursue, and we'll do that with this unit. So I'm suddenly one, two, three, four. We can, can go all the way here. So the cavalry has done a breakthrough here. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. We have one more attack to do, and it's here. So we have some dragoon fire here to do. So we start with attacking the Verden dragoons seven. I think that's a miss. Yep. And the Vrangel unit will fire back. 
And they got a 10, that's for sure a hit. Yep, but not dispersed. So these guys take a hit. Then they need to charge. So now it's 1 to 2 instead of 1 to 1. And there's no morale or anything else. So 1 to 2 for the Swedes in the attack odds. That's a 7. 71 to 2 is A1. We need to retreat one. These guys will pursue. So a really chaotic uh, battle happening over there. One of the Newland just cr crushed this defense and break did a breakthrough there. All right, I think that was all then. Um, pretty crazy if you ask me. Um, so when the next turn starts, we are still on the zero uh, for now at least. So no morale boost for anybody. So we're gonna flip this over to the Saxon side and we start with the artillery phase. All the artillery units can fire, but if they are adjacent, they need to fire against an adjacent and they need to be just in front of them. But luckily for these artillery, there is a Swedish unit just in front of them. So they're gonna start with firing there. Light artillery, one hex range, two in strength. Um, so we're gonna fire here. A seven is a hit. We got an eight, so that's a hit. Close range artillery against these pikemen. It goes down to two strength, and we need to check Mardefeld if he took a cannonball. He didn't. Okay. Next artillery, I think we have one here. That's down to one point on one range. That's a seven. Um, I'm gonna roll on this. So it's uh, actually a miss then. Then we have the heavy artillery. Let's fire against Spare over there. It's a four hex, train, uh, four hex range and two, two strength point unit over oh, 10. Let me see now. 10 is a hit on... No, yeah, here we go. So we actually hit these guys. Bam, with the heavy artillery. And we also need to check Spade. He's good. These guys don't have any units in range, nor do these, so that's the artillery phase. Then we go to the movement phase, and we start with taking half of these guys out from the dispersed box. So should we take the infantry or the cavalry? Hmm. Good question. Let's take out the cavalry and put them with Dunewald here. Um, yeah, now we have Furstenburg here. Um, actually, they belong to this side. Should we strengthen there? Or should we strengthen here? I think this is more critical right now. We can get bashed here. But then I think I will not take this one because they don't belong to this flank really. It's just, it's just a, bit, a bit weird. So I'm going to take back some Russian infantry instead. So these guys appear here. Uh, or should we take them, put them here where we have the infantry breakthrough? Yeah, let's do that. So here we go. Because here is where these guys got lost, right? So they now rally and appear uh, down here. Um, so now it's the Saxon movement phase. Now let's see. It's a bit of a hard place. I mean, we have many troops in hard places there. We have some reinforcements coming up here, but I wonder... What we can do again? Should we attack the light cavalry out on the extreme flank, or should we boost here? We're down to one point, so we're gonna we might get killed by these guys. Maybe I could send one to attack here and one to help out Dunewald here in his fight. I think I'll do that. Um, thing is, I'm gonna get hit in the flank next time. 
This is hard. Okay, I'm going to do it this way instead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I could get countercharged by these guys, but they are only. Uh, these guys could also countercharge. Oh man. But I will do it anyway. So now these and these will counter charge. So we have the Swedish fire coming first with three points. That's an seven. That's a hit. Oh. These guys take a hit, but they will also fire with two points. Seven. I think two points is not enough with seven. No. Then we have the Swedish attack with Krasau. Three points against one. We have the same morale. But we had Krasso giving it to a uh, 4 to 1 in odds. And we rolled an 8. 4 to 1, an 8. That's B1. So these guys need to retreat 1. And these guys will follow. Okay, that was not super good. So these guys then, they need to protect the flank. So I will not attack with them, I will just move one, two, three, four, five. Could I get maybe I should do like this? Six. So now I can actually counter charge in all these hexes, right? So if these guys will try to move into flanking, I can counter charge with Jordan's uh, dragoons. So these guys will stay. The bad thing is now they will need to fight with these guys alone because these guys will fight with those alone. So I'm a really bad position here as a Saxon player right now. Um, these guys could kind of back off, but uh, it's, it, it's, that doesn't help me really. So I'm, uh, I need to take the fight, try to survive. Uh, these guys are more or less locked in combat, but they are happy. They're going to give full volley against the Rienschild here. Uh, so that's good. Here we're going to battle. Here we're going to battle with bad odds. Really bad odds. Again, if not Holstein, would, we could of course back off here. Using all the uh, movement points, you can back off one step from a sock. I think also infantry can do that, but I'm not 100% sure, or if it's only a cavalry thing, really. But I was thinking maybe these guys could help out in that battle. So maybe we should do this one, or use all the movement. These guys would go one, two. Help that gives me a bit better odds. But then we need someone to man these defenses, and that will be one of our reserve regiments. So one, two, three, four. Okay, he cannot get there. Hmm. One, two, three, four. Next time these guys will go there, but they need to stop here in the sock. So let's hope uh, we can grab this. We have zone of controls out there, so it's difficult for the Swedes to get this. Here we're gonna stay. Um, I think this is a bit calm now, so I'm gonna move some more troops towards the right, or the left. One. Two. Three. I'm gonna stay there. Here I will not do any movement, but here we need to do something. Here we have the odds on our side. Um, we have this guy, but we could... I mean, Wrangel here... Yeah, he was faced like that, actually. He could turn around. One, two, three. Here we're gonna attack. 
these will also turn around and these I will just put there to secure the flank of these guys if, if these get any ideas. So here we go. Uh, no counter charge happening there, but we have a nice flank attack to do against Newland's cavalry here. But again, let's start from this flank. So what do we have? Let's start with the difficult ones over here. So here we need to attack those two. That's one against two, but we're going to fire first with one point. That's a nine. That's a hit. That is a hit. We're going to take this really heavy troop, but the Swedes will fire back also with one. They missed, but that was a good one. So we kill this, bring this to zero. And then we only need to attack these guys. It's one to one straight. That's a six, meaning no effect. So these guys is fighting really well here. Then we need to attack from here to here. There's no fire, so we're just gonna attack one against two. Both have nine in morale. That's an eight in one against two. Uh, attacker one minus one. So actually we take a hit here. We are eliminated and the morale track goes up again. These guys can gain ground. Okay, so we're done with those. So let's go down here. These nice guys need to attack these guys. That's first a one point fire. If we are lucky with that, we could survive, but we missed. Swedish will fire back. Bad roll from them as well. Then we have one to one, but then we have Krasau, so it's one to two. And we rolled a 10, meaning we take a hit. And now, as you see, the Saxons start to crumble. Again, we can gain ground with a live regiment. We're gonna do that. Then we have this attack we need to do. We're gonna fire first, one point. That's an eight with one point, it's not enough. So then we need to attack one against two and we have lesser morale, so it's one against three in odds. Roll the six, A1, we need to retreat one hex. Luckily we can retreat this way, uh, meaning we don't die in, in the enemy zone of control. These guys will now follow. So we have a full Swedish cavalry breakthrough happening here now. Here's some good things for the Saxon side. These two guys will do a full volley of four points against that um, cavalry unit. And they rolled really awesome. 12. Let's see now. Four points. 12. That's an R result. So kill this cavalry unit where all goes down and we're gonna check Rienschild again he's fine so he needs to relocate so now he goes to the next unit in the same regiment that was reckless of me to attack these uh, infantry without any support actually that was really dumb okay we need to attack here I think I'm not sure about if these can be counted in attack for close combat, if they can do that. Um, I mean, artillery in attack. I'm not sure. Um, I think I need to check that actually. Hold on. Actually, artill artillery can attack. So this will be. But they only get one point so it's three points in the attack against two so that's one to one but then we have Mardefeld so it's one to two actually in the end uh, but we're going to do some fire first of course the switch will not fire but we have a two points musketry fire to resolve first but that's a miss okay then we have the one to two charge eight Attacker one minus one. Okay. Bad thing now is 
artillery cannot retreat, they are eliminated. And we need to retreat. So, um, let's see now. A1 minus 1. And you always need to do retreat first. So these guys just get eliminated. The Swedish uh, will uh, get the morale for it. And then they retreat and take the hit. So we need to take also a hit here. So this will get eliminated now or removed because the Swedes are advancing into the in the hex. Okay. But these guys need support. They are also getting two units in their sock now, so that's uh, it's tough. Then we have another Russian attack here in the back lines. Uh, these are in a tough position because if they are forced to retreat, they will do that in an enemy zone of control, and that will not. They will be uh, just get eliminated then. But we have fire combat to do first. Two points from the Holstein regiment miss. The Kronobergs regiment will fire back miss and then we have the combat it's one to one and we roll an eight attacker takes one hit so the russians actually take a hit here oh my not going too good for them we have another attack coming from here we have first some fire to do two points from the russians miss the swedes will fire back with one point miss so, two to one, three to one, actually. That's pretty good odds. Three points against one. Now we're all the four, I think that's good. Uh, B2, okay, so these guys need to retreat two hexes. They are seriously pushed back. Pushed back. They go there, they have 80 morale, pushed back two hexes. Okay, they need to do a morale check actually. So if we roll a one, they are dispersed. No, no worries. But a good pushback from these guys over here. But we have some Swedish coming in into the defenses here. Then we have the right flank still to do. And let's start from here, we have some dragoons attacking these slachta unit here so we're gonna first do some dragoon fire with four points six with four points that's uh sorry we're gonna check here that's a miss then we have no fire back because these are not um, dragoons but we have four points against two that's two to one but these guys have better morale, it's one to one, and then we have also the leader on that side, so it's one to two. Five. Both sides take a hit. Hit and hit, and then we're gonna check if Hummerjelm is a casualty. No. Okay. Then we have this combat here, we have attacking those guys in the rear, so they can only defend with one point. So we have three points against one. And we have the same morale thanks to the live regiment. So three against one. And remember, these guys cannot retreat now. That's the... or actually, no, they cannot. Three to one, they can get eliminated really easily now. Seven. Three to one, seven. That's... The defend retreat one. They need to go here, but that's sock, so they eliminated. Bam. Here we can see how important these flank or rear attacks are. They are really deadly. We have one attack still to do. We're gonna do some dragoon fire with two points. That's for sure a hit. Uh, Two points, that's an R result on the Swedes. Let's see now, but it's a hit also, so they're gonna get eliminated. But they will first get the chance to fire back with one point. They missed. Things are not going too good for the Swedes right now. We are actually on the proper zero here on the morale track now. Uh, I will not gain ground there, and that's all. 
I think by that we are done with turn two. So we're gonna next time go back to turn three or advance to turn three and then we'll see this Swedish unit coming back to play. We have one Saxon unit as well here. So in the dead pile we now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Swedish units and one, two, three, four, five Saxon units. But this is a Swedish turn. They have a tough advance still to do here to the Saxon lines. This artillery is really deadly. But we are seeing worrying signs here for the Saxons. Their flank is crumbling. They only have one, two, three cavalry units left. And two of them also have taken a hit already. We have lots of Swedish cavalry that will attack the these guys in the flank, if not this turn, the next. Probably already this turn, actually. It's going to get tough for them. Um, on this flank, though, the Saxons are kind of in, having the upper hand. Maybe we need to redirect some cavalry from the center from the Swedes to counter that uh, because we have really good quality cavalry here still but uh, we might even see a Saxon counter-attack in that case from the infantry getting these guys that might get interesting uh, but we'll see about that in the next episode I think this is enough for now so uh, hope you enjoyed it and hope you will get back for turn 3 of the Battle of uh, Frauschat. Bye for now.